equals 40 arm lengths of cord. So now that I know how much it is, instead of having two seams in the middle, I'm just gonna have one seam and do half that length. And Primrose is keeping me company in the shop. I thought I'd share a little bit of my processes. I just did, got cut out um, another 20 arm spans of Danish cord. And so what I did was, is actually before I even put it up here, I found it roughly in the middle and like um, basically tried to get all the kinks from it being coiled out of it. So like four or five times I just, you know, worked from half of it and tried to push all of those curls out. They're still going to be there a little bit, but they're going to be way reduced. And so next what I've got going, this is at the bottom. I've got it taped, both the end so it doesn't fray, and then up, and so I'm gonna do my weave quite a few times, and eventually be able to tighten up this once I've got enough weaves in there to hold it in place. Over here was a start on this side, and so right here it started, and so the vertical piece probably comes up to about here. So eventually this one will be cut back some. And then I did non-traditional as far as my, um, where I had new stuff come in. And so I just felt like I got a better, tighter fit if I did one on one shooting down or shooting up, depending on it, um, next to this seam and then the other one being over here. And so that meant that I broke my pattern but man, did it hold so much better. So that's what's happening here. Um, and it's okay. I like it. Step one, you have it taped in the back. Badoop. It's coming around and it dives underneath. It's going to come here and then it's going to go a second wrap here. And then I'm going to keep going. Next step is, is that you can see I have a few um, rows going. And so what we've got is, is that came out here, went behind, and then did a full wrap, and then went behind and did a full wrap. And next, the cord here will shoot in there. But I'm going to try tightening this up a little bit. And clamps are definitely important. And then thought I also mentioned other tool, favorite tools, blue tape, pair of scissors. This is called, it's actually a leather working tool and it's like considered like a fish bone. This one's just plastic and then a pair of pliers are super useful. And a couple of trigger clamps, the small ones are really nice. These are just four and a halfers. A really great crossover tool when doing the Danish cord weave is this guy. I got it for leather working um, and it was like called a fishbone something or another. But instead of using a screwdriver, I can get in there and I don't have to worry about dinging anything up because it's all soft corners. And it really helps me pry everything down. The top one is always has a little bit of gappiness, but then once I get one on top of it, I can really press it down. The bottom two rows are now been tightened, so clamps in the beginning will be vitally important. Um, and then that the very first row is going to remain floppy until I build up quite a few rows to be able to yank it up and through. And I find that yanking it hard up, but then where it's really tight going around the corner and jamming it this way really helps it stay in place. So I've just kind of got to wait to build up enough rows for that to happen. And I'm gonna just keep adding probably two rows at a time and then tightening them. So they'll go on loose and then I'll tighten them. And this is sort of what my pile looks like on the floor. And in general, it remains, it, it generally doesn't get any type of knot and it sometimes it gets bunched, but usually just slopping it around a little bit. Um, undoes the coils that kind of happen. And while it's still pretty fresh every couple of rows, I find that it is helpful to kind of 
wring it out and try getting some of those kinks all the way out of the line. At this point, I've got enough rows that I'm ready to actually go back and tighten this up because now when I shove it against this part over here, I've got enough friction along all of these rows that it will hold. So what I'll do is loosen this and make sure I get to pull it back to at least this guy over here. And then I'll pull everything forward this direction and then yank it up managed to get the very bottom row over here tightened. I didn't go ahead and let this get loosened on the very top because the clamp was in the way, so I just went one row back over here. But again, I just tightened the dickens out of this, wrapped it around, made sure I was holding finger pressure right here, and then yanked it forward towards this corner while making sure I didn't lose any pressure down there. And now I'm going to leave this tail long. I'm still going to let it get wrapped by about twice as much to make sure that this does not come loose at all. And then I'll snip it. And then I'll make sure the last little tail that's visible gets buried underneath some more rows. All right, 20 arm lengths got me exactly to halfway point. Here's what I'm doing. It's not the prettiest or I think the most traditional way to end. So, this is where the line needs to go, so I dove down, and but I was finding that I didn't get as nice by starting right here, um, because it could pull loose in this whole area. Uh, so that's why I backtrack just a little bit and jam it in there. Um, later I will cut this when I'm all done. But I've been finding that until I finish the full side, this is a great way to be able to grab my pliers and yank down and get just a tiny bit more tension. And then once I cut this, it's easy enough to just tuck it under some old rows. So that's my process and it allows me really quickly to start being able to add tension. Um, what you end up with is these little seams like, yay, so I break the pattern. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a compromise, but it lets me move forward quickly. One tip I have after starting a new row, so after you've done all your tightening and you're about to start a new row, I like leaving myself like a whole handle width so that I can get in there and really start tightening versus being bogged down. And then I don't have to leave as much slack, but it's fine to leave some slack um, because I'm not really trying to get anything tight for the next couple of rows, and then I'll unclamp and come back to this loop here, or this loose strand, and go forward from there. This has become my normal amount that I do before I then go and tighten. So definitely a few rows. I finish out a side with wrapping and get around a few more times, um, but it's a nice amount. Now that I've made a few of these boxes with the Danish cord, I challenged myself to have no seams whatsoever on the inside, so that meant I was pulling over 40 arm lengths of cord through, but I like how seamless it turned out on the inside. Very soon, my firewood boxes will have some major upgrades. It probably took me close to a week to do all the weaving between a ton of troubleshooting and needing to order new material and then just took hours and hours on each side to weave.
I was able to do this one with no um, breaks in the cord. And I think I'm gonna do it on the big one too, even though that's gonna be a ton to pull through. And I'm thinking this one might be a unicorn. <laughs> it might have the hemp cord on one side, and the Danish cord on the other, until I can't stand it being unique. Um, but sometimes it's nice to break up the pattern. And so I'm gonna try it, at least at first, and see if I can handle just one having a smaller texture. I highly encourage anyone interested in doing this Danish cord figure eight weave to do it. It's definitely very approachable, but I'm leaving these longer slow segments in the video so that you get a real sense of how time consuming it is and that it's not at all a quick process, but I think it's a beautiful one and adds a lot of natural texture to a piece. Here I am getting out kinks that I've gotten in the line before I start another round of loose weaving. I start laying the line for another round of loose weaving. That very first row, I like to leave quite a bit of slack, enough that you can almost imagine wrapping your hand around that I can use as a handle to start pulling tension um, immediately when I release that clamp. 
And that way, I found it so much easier that if I can wrap my hand around the cord, um, I don't have to use my pliers as often. And I just like that system of leaving all that slack right there. A couple other tips I'd like to point out that once I got going, I really figured out for myself was is that the leading part of the line that you just saw me pick up, um, I place underneath the leg based on what I need to do with that cord next. I also then found myself almost having four positions that I would pull all of this long line out into so that I didn't need to overlap itself and would lay flatter when I go to, um, you know, when I do the next wrap. So of course I had two outside and two inside spots um, in an arc that I laid the line out in. So here I am placing the cord underneath. I'm now going more towards the center of the arc and pulling all the cord right there. And then if I remember right, I next jumped to the far right hand side to lay all my line and then go slightly more center. And then I went far left, slightly more center, far right, slightly more centered. So that was, I think, the rhythm that I got myself into as far as laying out the cord. And of course, occasionally you get sort of a little kink in the line that you just see me dealing with. I found myself really enjoying hearing the rushing sound that the cord made as it flees past the wood elements. Huge moment for me. I just finished weaving. Uh, I chose that my last big one, instead of doing it in multiple um, sections, I did it in one continuous weave. So that meant a lot of pulling part, or a lot of pulling cord through, which maybe add some time to it. Um, but it's really seamless because of that. Subscribe, like, check out other videos, do all those normal YouTube things. Thanks so much.